Hallelujah. So we have to understand that we are leaving the shadow of Adam on tonight. We are leaving the shadows of Adam's failure because, because of Christ, we don't have to walk in it anymore. Because of Christ, we don't have to be like Adam. Because of Christ, our flesh do not, does not have to rule us. We are ruling our flesh. In other words, this, we're not a slave to our flesh. Our flesh is a slave to our spirit. So if I say go over there and do that and I'm led by God, my flesh is going to do it. Not if my flesh says I got to have a man, so we're going to do that. No, it doesn't work like that. So we have to embrace the promise of God for our life. We have to embrace the healing and the restoration because he wants to release healing in our lives on tonight. He wants us to walk in everything that he has spoken, but we have to expose ourselves. We have to come out of hiding. We have to walk in the place that God has ordained, but first we have to be real about where we are. If you look in the scriptures, God just wanted people to be real about where they were. In other words, if you don't have it going on, stop trying to carry it like you have it going on. Let God get you to a place where you can have it going on. Hallelujah. And there's some things in our life that happen sometimes that we don't understand. I stand up here, it's nothing glorious about being up here. It's no glamour about being up here. This thing is for real. This thing is serious. This thing requires a lifestyle that I once thought I would not be able to do, but thanks be to God who causes us to triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when you make up in your mind that you are going to obtain everything that God has for you and nothing less, then you will walk in, in the spirit and not after the flesh. And you'll go before God and say, look, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing. The Bible says if a man or woman lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, and God will freely give it. So we have to ask God when we don't have wisdom. Everything that, that I was able to do, books and materials, I'm working on some manuals now, I don't have anything except for later. But as far as my young years, I stopped going to school in the ninth grade. I don't have a problem telling y'all that now because God has blessed me now. But I stopped going to school in the ninth grade and didn't even attend any classes for 10 years. So you can imagine what my educational ability was. You can imagine that I was even struggling with English, much less when I never thought about writing a book. So I'm trying to tell you that when you make up in your mind that you're going to serve God, that you're not going to follow after what the enemy is saying, but you're going to believe God, you will accomplish everything that God has called you to accomplish. But you got to be real about where you are. I asked the Lord, Lord, I don't have wisdom. And the Bible says, get all you're getting, get wisdom and get understanding. If it costs all you have is what the Bible said. And trust me, it costs everything I had. But I went to God and I said, I need wisdom and I need understanding. And God gave me those things. And I want to tell you on tonight that he wants to do the same thing for you. But first you have to expose yourself, expose your sin, expose your issues and be real with God about where you are and then he can take you where he wants to take you. But as long as we are up in these church buildings playing games and trying to look holy, license plate holy, but we in our jobs acting like fools, we in our jobs they don't even know if we saved, we in our jobs, we ain't even praying for nobody, we not even encouraging anybody, we are being a fake and a phony and God says if you want to walk in my purpose then you got to expose yourself and be real about where you are. Hallelujah. This thing is for real. This is not no joke. This is for real. And God is saying we need to be real about it. Because again, we have been redeemed and released, called to no longer be a victim, but to walk in victory. And we have to fix our mind on things above. We have to fix our mind on the promises of God for our life. We have to have confidence that all of these issues and all of our failures and all of the things that we don't understand, that we don't know why it's going on, that we don't understand, it doesn't make sense, and, and, and the enemy is trying to pull us down. We got to understand, like we said on, on Tuesday night, that this is part of a process. I don't know why God allows the things to happen that he ha allows to happen to me, but I do know he's allowing them. And I have to take on the mindset of Job when he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Because Job caught the revelation that, you know what? You're allowing this to happen to me, God, so basically you're doing it. I mean, if you want to be real about it, that's what's going on. So it's a purpose for you even allowing it. And you said that you knew the plans you had for me, they were good and not evil. So some kind of way in all this evil is some good. 
it's an expected end of hope and a future. So we got to hold on to this thing. We don't always understand, even when the enemy comes up against us and has people and things lined up in our life to take us out, we don't understand, but you better believe that God works all things in accordance with his will. He works all things together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So even that ridiculous situation, that situation that has had you bound for years, that situation that seems so unproductive, you cannot get out of it, that situation somehow is going to be worked together for the good of you. The Bible didn't even say it's going to be worked together for the good of God. He said work together for our good. So we have to understand that again, his, his plans for us are good and not bad to bring us to this expected end. So I want to say to you tonight, I told you I didn't have a lot to say, but God wants us to catch this thing. He wants us to be restored and built up and walk in healing. Because I got news for y'all, this thing is difficult some days. This life can be difficult some days. You, I'm, I'm a human just like everybody else. You got loneliness, you got stuff going on in your mind, you're tired of struggling, you're tired of doing stuff by yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm there. I go through all of it. But the reality of the situation is that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. But the reality is I got to expose this thing to God because then what will happen is I think I'm serving God, but I really have an attitude with God about what's going on. So I'm not even being real with God because really I'm singing the song and I'm laying hands on you, but really I'm ticked off at God because I don't understand why he's doing what he's doing to me. So we got to expose ourselves on tonight. We have to go from the shadow of Adam on tonight and go to the image of Christ because he created us for a purpose and he created us with, with good thoughts and, and created us to carry out his will in the earth. So we have to understand this on tonight. And I have one thing that I want to read in closing. And if you could turn in your Bibles to, I believe it's in 2 Corinthians, and it's in the fifth chapter. And this is basically your word for tonight. It's in 2 Corinthians. Well, the whole thing is your word, but this is really a word for somebody on tonight. I guess I need to find it myself. 2 Corinthians 5, and we'll read, I think, from verse 17 all the way to the close of it. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All thing, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we have to understand that the Bible also declares in 1 Corinthians, you don't have to turn there, but 15 and 22, that as in Adam, all things die, and even so in Christ, all shall be made alive. In other words, what I want to say to you on tonight is that as you turn away from the sins of Adam, as you get into a dialogue with God on tonight, I don't know, you can do it now, you can do it when you get home, you can do it, but the thing is, you have to understand that everything that was in Adam, everything that was in your flesh, everything that was your issues, everything that failed you in life is dying on tonight. And in Christ, everything is going to be made alive and made new. So you have to understand here that everything in your life can literally be made new as of tonight. Everything, every area, every issue, as you expose that thing before God, he can come in and make that thing new. But the thing is, we have to keep exposing it and keep being real about it. We have to understand again that, that God has come so that the dead places in our life will be restored. Basically, I want to say to some of you on tonight that you're going to be raised up from the ashes because I know what it's like. Matter of fact, I still know what it's like to feel like everything around you is burnt up and it's nothing but ashes. It's nothing but waste. But you have to believe that you're going to come up from the ashes on tonight. You have to believe that even in the midst of everything that's going on, that God is going to restore you. That he's already restored you and you're going to see the manifestation of the restoration. 
because you have to understand that when all things have been made new, they were already made new. See, God sees us as a product of something that's already done. So you have to understand that all you have to do is walk this thing out and see the manifestation of it. Because the Bible says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. So I want to encourage you tonight that if you haven't been of good courage, you need to change your attitude, expose your issues, and be of good courage. But the Bible says, wait on him and be of good courage. So we want to do that because then it says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But first, you know, we have to wait on him. We got to be real that sometimes there's some things we got to wait for. And I believe it's just like weight loss. When we don't see a result in two weeks, we want to give up the diet. It's the same thing when God, when we don't see the miracle two weeks after the conference, we ready to call the pastor on something next Sunday, but it may not happen that fast. But the Bible says, as you wait, as you serve me, because when I hear the word wait, immediately I think about a waiter or a waitress. So as you serve me, then you're going to run because you're going to be serving me and I'm not going to let you be weary. As you're serving me, you're going to walk and you're not going to faint. And there's going to be strength in the midst of your serving me. So I want to say to, to someone on tonight that if you want to know what to do while you're waiting, serve God and walk in your calling. Walk in your destiny while you're waiting and don't let any demon in hell stop you. So on tonight, I just want to encourage you all tonight. And I just want to speak some things over your life. So if you could just stand, and we're just going to pray. And I want to declare some things, because I want to walk in the power and the authority on tonight. And I want to just bless you and pray for you and declare some things over your life. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> 